Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and welcome to Brattleboro, Vermont. Now this is the first time I've been in the state of Vermont in 50 years and Beverly's first time here and our very first stop in Vermont was here at the Holstein Association of America. Now let me explain. Holsteins or Holstein Friesian are a breed of cattle, milk cows specifically, that are bred for giving large volumes of milk at a very reasonable good butterfat content that is indicative. It's going to maximize the value for a farmer, for a dairy farmer. So they're probably the most popular. They're the large black and white cows that you see almost everywhere in the United States, certainly everywhere in the northern or midwest part of the United States. They are very, very popular here. And there's also a red Holstein, which is kind of a brown and white pattern. Very similar breed, but a little bit different. Now, the best of these animals, the best of the best, are purebred, just like you'd have a pedigreed dog, perhaps, or a pedigreed horse. Holsteins also are pedigreed with very, very, very strictly maintained bloodlines that are all documented. And there are certificates to registered Holsteins that are purebred. And these animals obviously a lot more valuable. They're very good producers. Uh, the bulls obviously are, are cherished, the bloodlines for breeding. Well, Beverly, my wife, raised registered Holstein cattle when she was a young girl before we met and grew up on a dairy farm. And so, though the cattle are gone, Beverly is still a member of the Holstein Association of America. We just found that out from the very nice lady Michelle inside that we were talking to. Uh, she's been inactive for a couple of years. We've re reactivated her membership and we're going to get certificates of the cattle that Beverly owned as a young woman. In fact, one of them was the state grand champion in the state of Michigan. And she has a nice trophy that's uh, called a model cow, which is just exactly what it sounds. It's a miniature model of a cow of the true type Holstein cattle. So she's very proud of that to this day. Wonderful animals and a very significant part of, of Beverly's life. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the early 1970s, the milk industry was stric stricken by a, a disaster where a fire retardant called polybrominated biphenyl commonly just called PBB, was mixed in with the cattle of feed and ended up killing many, many cows and contaminating the milk supply in the early 70s. And Beverly's family was one of the second highest contamination levels in the state or in the entire nation. And they lost their herd to that. It was a very devastating time for her. And so it's something that still tugs at the heartstrings after all these decades. So we came here while we were in New England specifically to Brattleboro so that we could get copies of the registration certificates from Beverly's cattle, which have been lost in the past. So we're getting those restored and to come here and talk with the folks at the Holstein Association. Now they've just returned from the Holstein trade show in New York and uh, so we're not going to go in and trouble them right now. Everybody's still trying to get their act together from after being back. They're exhausted and they don't need me putting a camera in their face and there's nothing really this is just an office building where people work there's nothing spectacular to share with you but I did want to show you that we are here at this facility now Bev, let's just go ahead and swing around Brattleboro, Borough kind of a you know smallish you know medium-sized town beautiful little community this building here where the Holstein Association is quite a nice building you know it's been here quite a while but you can see it's got some, you know, lovely old ivy growing on the building, indicative of the, this part of the country and that sort of a thing. And of course, the American flag hanging outside. It's uh, the beginning of July, so it's gorgeous weather. Here in Vermont, it's, it's, it's plenty warm, even though we're in the very northern latitudes. And it's just a really, really nice time. So, while we're here, we're going to try and check out Brattleboro and show you a little bit more of the town and our first visit here in Vermont. So come along and let's take a look. So Brattleboro is nestled in this cute little valley right in the 
southeastern corner of Vermont. And we're here right on the edge of what is the Connecticut River. It's a fairly su substantial river that runs down through this valley. And you can see the mountains up in the distance behind here. Just a gorgeous setting. I imagine it's a beautiful place to live, although I understand the winters here can be pretty intense. So while we're here, we're gonna stop and we're gonna sample the local cuisine because as I'm sure you've heard, you haven't really been there until you've tried the food. So Bev and I are gonna stop and have some lunch and see how it is. Okay, so we came inside of Wheatstone Station. It's a restaurant here right on the Connecticut River. As you can see, right behind me, seating literally overhanging the water. So just, just a beautiful setting for what is turning out to be a really beautiful day. And uh, the mountains in the distance, and we're gonna get some uh, ribs for our meal, and I, I don't know, I've never had, what are they, cider, cider spiced ribs, I think. So that's what we're gonna have for, for lunch, and uh, I'll give you a look at those when the, when the order shows up. But can you imagine a more idyllic set? Look at that, look at down the river. What a place to have lunch. I mean, this is just a gorgeous place. If you're ever in Brattleboro, yeah, Wheaton Station definitely should be on your list. And this was a recommendation actually by Wheatstone. Uh, Wheatstone. My bad. Wheatstone Station. And uh, it was a recommendation by Michelle over at the Holstein Association. And uh, so thank you, Michelle. If you see this, definitely appreciate this. What a gorgeous place. And it looks like they got a great selection. Really nice looking food. So I'm looking forward to it. So we'll talk to you in a minute. How's the meal, Bev? Fantastic. I think it's the best ribs I've ever had in my life. They're cider barbecue ribs and they are extremely delicious. I recommend you come in and try them. All right, so lunch was absolutely magnificent. Um, but it turns out, I, you know, I still, we still didn't get the name of the place right. It's Whetstone, W-H-E-T-S-T-O-N-E. Whetstone, like what you use for sharpening, you know, a knife or something. Whetstone Station. Brewery and restaurant, there's actually a brewery here too, which I don't think we're gonna have time to tour or anything, but uh, it's in the adjacent building. But I want to tell you, the ribs here were absolutely fantastic, really nice food. A lot of foot traffic starting to come across the river on the bridge here. So I didn't realize there would be a lot of, but there's a, there's a wooden path alongside of the roadway here for, uh, for pedestrian use. So that's kind of nice since it's really the only way over the river for, you know, miles, I suppose. Now certainly if you're going to take the trouble to come all the way to Brattleboro in Vermont, well, you want to stop by the Creamery Bridge. Now, we've been doing a series recently about covered bridges, because, well, I like covered bridges. And it just so happens there's one right here in town. Now, this is a town lattice structure made out of spruce, built in 1879. It's got a span of 80 feet and a width of 19 feet. Now, it was closed to traffic as of 2010. It's no longer certified for commercial, for, you know, vehicular traffic. But it is still open to pedestrian traffic. And it's one of the few that are painted red here in the Vermont area, as I understand it. Let's walk over and take a look inside because another thing I want to show you. Now look at this adorable little stream that the Creamery Bridge goes over. It is so quaint. Just this little stream, not much of a, you know, water flow at all. It's very cute, a lot of rocks, very, very pretty little stream. Now the Creamery Bridge is so named because at the time that it was built in 1879, the, the local Creamery actually stood on the far side of the bridge. And that's what this bridge was built for, was access to the local dairy Creamery at the time, and that's what it's named for. Now in 1920, come along with me, It 
wasn't until 1920 that they actually went ahead and added a pedestrian walkway along the side of the bridge. So from 1920 until 2010 when the bridge was closed to vehicular traffic, it then was available for both vehicular traffic and pedestrian traffic. And obviously now the entire bridge is for pedestrian traffic, but kind of a nice little addition that they did in the 20s. And that was all. I just wanted to show you that while we were here in Brattleboro. Beautiful little bridge, beautiful little stream. Such a quaint setting and something worth stopping and seeing while you're in town. Folks, check out right here in Brattleboro, this magnificent colonial home here. This is called a left-hand colonial because the main ridge on the right-hand side runs fore aft and then the addition, which is what it was, with the ridge running along the side runs off to the left. So in that era, in the late 19th century, mid 19th century, it would have been about the time this house was built. It would have been a left hand or a right hand colonial. This is a left hand. And this has been very well preserved. This house is easily 115, 125 years old. And probably, I don't know, 2,500, 3,000 square feet. This is a common architectural style certainly in small towns and rural areas throughout the United States, and I just want to take a minute to show you. This one's been very nicely preserved. Just a gorgeous place, that's all. Now located right here in what is arguably the center of downtown Brattleboro, directly across the street from the Holstein Association and just up from the Connecticut River are the Whetstone Brook Falls. Now this is just a small brook and over its entire length it only drops about 40 feet. And the remnants of the falls now are just where it falls over a, little, a few pieces of what appear to be slate or some other sort of ledge rock. The brook was in, back in the day, dammed up and used to power mills, which would be grist mills or possibly saw mills, but at any rate, milling of grain for flour, things like that, back in the day. Well, that sense has been let go. The remnants of the dam, and we'll peel around here and show you that upstream there's the remnants of a concrete dam now that are long since defunct. And the falls is little more than a little rapid that comes over this beautiful huge piece of what appears to be slate. Very pretty, right here in the center of town. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice natural setting for a, a display in the center of town. Again, on this other corner is the Brattleboro Food Co-op. It's the, probably the largest food store here in the center of town. And this then goes on downstream here, only a couple of hundred yards where it spills in to the Connecticut River. So largely now by local folks, it looks like it's overlooked as they walk by because it's just something they've seen over and over their entire lives. But it's a cute place to stop and look. Now, we drove right past it and didn't even see it and uh, had to look at the directions again and again to realize that's how small this is. And it's so far below the road surface, it's down about 25 or 30 feet below the road surface, so you'd miss it unless you knew it was right across from the Holstein Association. So anyway, just another of the little cute attributes of this lovely little town. So Brattleboro is your typical small American town. Not quite as small as the towns that Bev and I grew up in of only a couple of thousand people. But Brattleboro is only 12,000 people as of the 2010 census. However, despite that, it's still the fourth most populous city in the state of Vermont. Vermont, not a hugely populated state, being way up along the Canadian border. It's a very quiet place, and yet it's had its modern difficulties, I understand, from talking to people. But still, very, very different from where we've been recently in the greater Washington, D.C. area. A very nice small town feel about it. You look around here in these buildings from the 18th and 19th century. Now, Brattleboro's been here since 1753, I believe. So it's a 
pre-Revolutionary War city, but just a gorgeous little town, a lot of brickwork here, and a very nice feel about it. Now, I understand that like the first weekend of every month, they have a, an art walk here, where local artists bring out their, their works to display and to sell. So there is a thriving art community here in Brattleboro as well. Other than that, it's just your average little town. There's nothing spectacular here to show you. There's some beautiful architecture, beautiful church that was over there. And, you know, a lot of very classic 18th, 19th century buildings that were built up as the town grew. But even over the, you know, what, 300 years that the town has been here, I guess, 250 or 300 years, um, 250 years, that the town has been here, that it's, it's grown up very slowly. And it, and it doesn't show any prospects of, a, of an explosion in growth. Now, there are some big companies here. There's a, a Fortune 500 company, a grocery distributor here, and there's a, a huge um, mental health and addiction facility here. I understand it's the largest in the Northeast. So there is a, you know, a thriving industry here, a thriving economy. But it, it's not an industrial town. It's not the sort of thing that's going to show a big spurt of growth from some sort of industrial technology. So it's a very nice place for families to, to live and to, to raise families and whatnot. Just a beautiful little town and really qualifies as part of our Small Town Americana series. So I'd like to thank you for joining us here in Brattleboro, Vermont. I hope you've enjoyed your visit. I hope that if you've got questions or comments, you'll leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. And if you haven't already, please pick subscribe. Come along for the adventure. We love having everybody with us. And as always, thank you for watching.